What about sunrise? What about rain? He sort of knew in his mind how the song was going to start. He always heard the finished product in his head from day one. I think he's a perfectionist for melody, so whether you're 8 or 80, you find something in his music that you like. And Michael had humanity in his music. People feel Michael's music because he felt it. He has ideas and he'll sing them to you. He might sing a bass line, he might sing a line for a string part, and he hears all the individual parts. And then, of course, the texture and control of his voice was just absolutely extraordinary. He paint mosaics with his voice, like, you know, Michelangelo paints pictures. He had the voice of the Sistine Chapel. You could almost say, here, sing the phone book. And he'd just start, like, singing the names and the numbers, and it, you'd go, wow, that's, that's good. I think he's a fan of music and art that came before him. He loved all types of music, so that's why I think he appealed to so many people. You never knew what direction he was going to go from. One of the first things I ever had to do with him um, after I got hired, one day we came in, and it's just me and Michael, and he pulled out a printout of the fans' opinion on what we should do for the tour. So he had a list of all the songs and how they voted and what was number one all the way down. Hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people were voting, fans were voting, and uh, we would get these lists and Michael would just smile and nod. He knew, I mean, because the minute that he announced, and he said, I'm doing this for the fans. He said, uh, look at my list, Bearden. I have this list, and this is what the fans want to hear, and I have this list, and look at my list, and I still don't have any J5 or off the wall on here. He was just agonizing over this list. The hardest part for us was, you know, getting this down to a length that was responsible. Because he loved every single song, but we had to cut this set list down. And he said, okay, Bearden, you choose it. And I would choose one. And he literally would go, oh, no, no. <laughs> How can we not do that? We can't do that. And I said, well, Michael, you don't want to be on stage three hours. No, I don't. And I'd say, what about um, You Are Not Alone? You Are Not Alone? I can't let You Are Not Alone go. That was my first number one song all across the world at the same time. Okay, so I'll take out a verse on that one. Okay, can we do that? He'll go, okay but that's going to hurt the girls, Beard, and that's going to hurt the girls. In the end, he did it. He would have these epiphanies. He would say, oh, you know, Kenny, 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 we don't need to do this because we're doing this, and followed by that, and they kind of take care of the same thing, and I know there would be people disappointed. However, we're repeating ourselves here, and that's how we started to be able to, like, cinch this in to a realistic set list. But it was the toughest part. The band learned everything. God bless them. They learned enough for two concerts. exactly how many songs we learnt, but it was quite a, quite a few. I mean, it would have been easier if you only wrote a couple of hits. <laughs> you know, it's like, then we, you know, it would have been fine. He had so many hits. I mean, the show could have gone on for 10 hours with all of his records. The Jackson 5 medley was definitely close to his heart. You have to honour that period of your life if this is going to be your last Tour, and he wanted to, so there were tons of songs that he wanted to sing, tons of songs that I wanted to hear, just for nostalgic reasons. And he would say to me, Bearden, I'm too, I'm too old to sing ABC. <laughs> I can't sing that. So we had to take a few things like that out. We did a few of the pieces, and he liked the old dance moves. So some things we wanted for himself, for instance, uh, Heartbreak Hotel. I was just playing around with it one day, and of course the band jumped right in because they're great stellar musicians. And he said, oh man, I would love to do it. I said, why, why can't we do it, MJ? He says, production value, uh, production value. We got. I can't just do it. We got to have a thing around it, and I just don't want to cheat the fans. I don't want to cheat the fans. And so we didn't put it in, and it was a, it was a few more like that. Bop, bop, bop. Should be point. It'll look like this. It was very important to figure out what the right opening song for the show was. That first song changed a lot, but we settled on Wanna Be Starting So. It was just such a celebration song and just 
great to open with. It's an anthem, it's a dance thing for him, and something he could just warm up to. The audience loves that song. There were new ways and unique ways we transitioned songs and arranged, and there's a great thing that MJ has for uh, the way you make me feel. We do it in a slow, jazzy kind of thing like that, and MJ's just really singing and milking the moment and simmering, as he would say often. And then we would just kick off into the song. In the black or white, there's a really great thing that we do with uh, Tommy Oregon and Ori, our guitarist, that MJ actually staged with Kenny Ortega one day after rehearsal. He wanted me to have an extra moment in that song, so he wanted me to hit a, the highest note. And he was like, no, higher. And so it's like, okay, I'll try to find a higher note, but it was, it was just, it was a funny moment because uh, I don't think there was a higher note playing in the key of that song. <laughs> we said, oh, what's some, some rock guitars to happen after this thing? So we came up with an arrangement and presented it to Michael and he helped stage it and he really loved it. And Tommy and Ori did a stellar job on, on this moment in the show. Black or White was a song that me and Ori soloed on, and uh, I got a chance to go to the front and solo, and then go to the side of the stage, put the guitar behind my back. And that's, that's how I express myself through my solos, and um, run around the stage and just express myself. So I really enjoyed that song. That was a lot of fun to play, just jamming out. Me and Tommy would be playing solo parts at each side of the stage and then would come together, then run up the ramp and it was this crazy thing and that was, that was really cool. There's a beautiful song that MJ has called Stranger in Moscow. Unbelievably beautiful song. But so is human nature. We couldn't do both. So one night he said, ah, let's learn both. One night I'll do Moscow, one night I'll do human nature. Depends on how we feel, Bearden, right? Right, MJ. Get me out, bam. Something right there. Into the nighttime. I'll go in the dressing room before the show. We figure out what it is. Call it on the stage, old school. So the set list never was really finalized. Let me take a ride. Human nature was always gorgeous and beautiful. Uh, MJ really loved to sing that, and we loved to play it for him. So that was one of my favorites. You can't choose, everything you play with MJ is great. How far along were we in the set list? We're still not done. <laughs> What's gonna happen in London is gonna be two snare drums. I love playing Thriller too, and the end of Thriller, which was threatened. <laughs> which was like really funky and cool. When the ghouls sort of come back to life. I think that was the favorite thing that the band loved to play because it was just extremely funky. Just so fun to play. At one point, it was only eight measures, and we were just like, "Oh, we want to play it longer." And then it uh, blossomed to 32 in the band. Just, we just really love to play that. I don't know anyone that you can put it on. You can put a record on 
and kids enjoy it. And also, your grandfather says, wow, that sounds good. From a musician's point of view, I'll tell you exactly why Michael's music is so popular. And he would say this to me often. You gotta keep it simple. You can't make it too complex. I want people from eight to 80 to be able to hum it. And so the simplicity of it is what makes it so popular. I didn't realize there were so many rhythm parts to his songs. So not only was I playing the lead parts, learning some of the funky rhythms and sort of R&B stuff was just new to me. So I learned so much, you know, doing that and listening very carefully because he was so particular about all of his parts in his music. So it made me respect him even more. It's palatable for people to get it. They can dance to it. It's a lot of complexity to it, but it sounds simple. And it seems like when he sings, he's reaching out and he's touching you. He's putting his hands on, make you move. And all of us musicians, creative people, have that. But some, only a chosen few, have it to the depth and the degree that Michael had it. And he had the greatest I've ever seen. He has a lineage of being able to go back and look at Fred Astaire, uh, Elvis, or everyone that came before him. And he's learned from that, and he's put it all in one rocket ship. That was part of his genius in that he loved hard rock. He loved opera. He loved classical music. So that was incorporated into his music. He wasn't just a one-trick pony. A little bit more behind the beat. Yeah. Jump, it's, jump, it's not the right sound, like so you're imagine this is the right bed. sound. Who would have thought a guy who was nurtured under the, the wings of Motown would at some point go, I'm gonna get the hottest rock guitar player right now and do a blazing solo on one of my songs. He was open to being pushed in different directions. He, he would say, well, I wanna do this there and I wanna do this, and I would say, yeah. But can we try this? You say, oh, okay, let's try it. And that right there just lets you know what kind of an artist he was because he had so much success and he still was open to having more, to learning more. Yeah, that, that's a cool move. Okay. He just was the kindest guy, you know, but when the music hits, when the music starts, it's a different Michael. It's a whole other ball game. It was just amazing working with him. He's such a musical genius and all the hooks and everything in his songs. He just reached so many people and his music we played forever. All his music, he had something positive to say and to try to help people, to get over their problems, letting you know that he was just as human as you are. Michael used to walk around saying that it always had the sizzle. I'm quoting him directly. He would say, I mean this in love, guys, but you gotta have the record. And then we're gonna go beyond that because people are paying to come see us. We have to give them the best. I mean, he was a perfectionist in every way. That's why we rehearse. Mm -hmm. It's okay, it's okay. Right here on this one. They wanted us to take those eight out, so now. Okay, it's okay, no. So now you're a little too soon. Yeah, we're, we're, we're totally nourished by it.